In this video we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator to create ourselves a flat design bongo drum. Um, as you can see here, this is an example of what it's going to look like once we're finished. Okay, so all we need to do to get started is head up to the File menu, select New, and we're going to go across to the Web tab and select this 1280 by 1024 pixel option. And then we'll click on Create. And from here we're going to grab our rectangle tool Go over our properties here, turn the stroke off, just use the white box with the red line going through it, and we're going to grab a fill colour. Now the fill colour just needs to be a uh, orangey red kind of colour. Okay, feel free to play with the levers there to fine tune it a bit, but something along those lines there looks good. If you want to use the hexadecimal code, it's double F 7E 6A. Okay, and I'm simply going to draw from the top left corner. Click and drag down to the bottom right corner, and that will give me a background colour. You can grab your selection tool now and click off that if you'd like, just to make sure it fits all right. And then you can go to your Layers panel, hit the little arrow next to the word Layer 1, and just lock that rectangle layer just here into place. And we do that by hitting this empty box just here next to the eye. When you click on it, a little padlock appears. And that's just locked our background into place so we can no longer move it or modify it. The next thing you want to do is start our bongo drum by creating the base. So I want you to grab your rectangle tool again, come back over to your properties panel, and in your properties panel we're going to choose a fill colour. Now you can choose any fill colour you want, but I'm going to use the colour mixer up here again. So not the swatches, but the colour mixer. And I'm going to type in a hexadecimal code. Okay, and we're looking for a light blue colour, so I'm going to do 64C5B4 and press enter. That gives me this aqua kind of colour for the base of the bongo. So I'm going to simply draw out a rectangle, which could look something like that. And using my selection tool, I'll just move it somewhere towards the centre. You want it near the bottom of the page as well. So from here what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this rectangle now. Okay, and the quick way to do that is stick with your selection tool, click on it once and hold Alt on your keyboard and you'll see that your mouse changes to a black and white set of arrows. Simply click and drag straight up and put this duplicate copy right on top of the original, like so. Now we're going to change the colour of the top rectangle here, so change the fill colour. I'm going to type in a code again, so 33495E. And I'll press enter, and that gives us a dark blue colour. Alrighty, so that's going to be the base of our bongo drum. We're going to now just um, give it a bit of shape by angling in some of the edges. So to do that we need the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow. And what I want you to do is just click on the top left corner of the dark blue shape. <laughs> From here, hold shift on your keyboard and press the right arrow three times. Click on the top right corner now, hold shift and press the left arrow three times. And you can see that that's starting to angle the top of our shape. Alright, now from here I'm going to go down the bottom to the light blue rectangle now. Click on the bottom right corner, hold shift and press the right arrow three times. And then finally, you probably guessed it, I'm going to click on the bottom left corner, hold shift and press the left arrow three times and that's now given us a bit of shape to the base of our bongo. You can hold shift and click on both of these um, rectangles, right click on them and group them together. Move them down the bottom if you want, you could make them a little bit skinnier, you could make them a little bit shorter. Okay, because we do have a big bongo drum to fit in up the top here, so we don't want the base to be too big. So probably something along those lines is a good look. Try and position it somewhere in the center of the page. Okay, so now we are ready to draw the actual drum itself that sits up the top here. And the way we do that is we're going to grab a rounded rectangle tool. With the rounded rectangle tool selected, we're going to go across to our properties and change the fill color. Again, I'm going to use a hexadecimal code, so in the color mixer I'll just type in FECD40. Press enter and I get a bright yellow colour. Alright, so we're going to draw a nice big drum on top of this. Okay, this is probably a bit too big, but let's just roll with it. 
something looking like that. And grab your selection tool and right click on top of the yellow part. Go to Arrange and we're going to send it to the back. So it's hidden behind everything at the moment. Now I went a little bit too far there. So what I'm going to have to do is go to my Layers panel and just bring the yellow rectangle above our actual background. So that's better. So it's still behind the base of our drum, but it's back in front of our um, background. So this is the start of our bongo. What we're going to do now is work on the edges to try and get um, the actual drum shape. So using the white arrow, the direct selection tool, I want you to click and drag over the top two corners of the drum. If I zoom in a little bit here, you'll see these little circles appear in the top corners. What you need to do is just grab either one of those and click and drag diagonally up until that little caption that follows your mouse cursor says zero pixels. That's the radius equaling zero pixels, which basically means we've got rid of the rounded corners and we've now made them sharp again. If we look down the bottom though, we've still got rounded corners on the bottom section. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click and drag over the top of the bottom two corners there. And that actually picks up the base as well. So what I might do is lock the base into place so we can't do that. So hit the little padlock there next to the group icon, which just locks the base into place. Okay, and now you can just highlight those two yellow corners at the bottom again. Using the little white circles like we did before, click and drag them in towards the center until you can't go any further. You'll see a red line appear when that's the case. And now it's just a bit of trial and error to get it looking good. Okay, so what we need to do is play with some things called handles to get this shape right. Okay, so to do this, we click on the path that runs from this little square here down to this little square here. They're called anchor points, those little squares. Okay, and in between is the path that connects them. Okay, you can actually click on those little anchor points and see these handles will show up. Okay, they're those lines that just appeared. If you hold shift, you can click on those lines and move them up and down and wherever you want to go to try and Give it a bit more of a sharper curve. Alrighty. What I'm looking for is the yellow lines to come out of the top right corner of the blue here. Okay, at the moment we're still a fair way off, but we'll just keep fiddling. So hold shift and I'm going to click on these anchor points over here now on the left side. We'll do the same thing, just lift it up. I'm going to get this bottom one and push it in a bit. Okay, now that's looking a bit better. You can actually pick it up and move it as well, so it gets a bit closer to our target. Uh, what else could we do? Still quite a sharp curve here. Alright, so we're getting close. What I'm going to do next is just move it up using the selection tool. And I'm going to zoom in and make sure that my yellow is pretty much coming out of that blue corner, which it seems to be doing almost exactly. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's zoom back out and have a look. Control zero will take you back. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. It's not bad. If we go compare it to our original, you can see our original's a bit skinnier, so if you want, you could possibly um, make this a bit skinnier. Just simply actually I won't hold shift, I'll just hold alt. Just drag that in a bit. Now I might need to move it back down a bit. So those corners I've got the yellow coming out of them. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. I told you it was a little bit fiddly, so it's just a bit of trial and error until you get that right. The last thing to do is pretty easy though. We're just going to grab our rectangle tool back, change our color back to this original blue we used, so the light blue. I'm going to change the hexadecimal code back to 64C5B4. And I'm going to start from the top left corner of the yellow shape, click and drag up, and draw myself a little rectangle like so. Okay, that's my bongo drum drawn. Now the final thing we want to do is add a bit of a shadow to this to make it um, look more like that flat design that you see so often these days. So using your rectangle tool, change your fill color to pure black. And I want you to click and drag outside of it 
and then come back over until half of the shape is covered. You'll see some pink guides pop up and show you when you hit that center point. Okay, that's how it should be looking. What we'll do now is change the opacity here to 10% and press enter. And we just want to cut out all this extra um, rectangle, I suppose, that we don't need. So to do that, what I'm going to do is go to layers and just unlock that base group there. I'm going to click and drag over the top of my entire shape. Then I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool to get rid of this section out here. So we hold the Alt key and simply click and drag into that area. And that deletes that section. Grab your Selection tool now and click off everything. And you should be able to see your finished bongo drum.